The A-100 Premier is a Russian long-range radar detection and control aircraft, also known as an AWACS platform, developed on the foundation of the Il-76 MD-90A transport aircraft. Its intended mission was to replace the obsolete A-50 and A-50U AWACS aircraft within the Russian Air Force. The first experimental work on the A-100 began around the year 2019. In February 2022, the aircraft performed its inaugural flight with the onboard radar system functioning. This radar reportedly has a detection and tracking range of up to 650 kilometers, which is roughly 400 miles, and can simultaneously monitor hundreds of air, sea, and ground targets. Designers stated that the new aircraft would operate as a versatile airborne command center, supervising fighters, strike aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles. It was also intended to transmit real-time intelligence data to ground-based air defense systems. The A-100 Premier represented a major technological leap for Russian aviation. The platform was initially constructed only with Russian components to improve the independence of the defense sector. In terms of features, it was projected to significantly outperform its predecessors due to advanced radar systems, improved engines, and more capable data processing algorithms. These capabilities were expected to make the aircraft competitive even when compared to Western AWACS platforms. The Russian Air Force originally planned to procure between 35 and 40 such aircraft, greatly expanding radar patrol capabilities, personnel coordination functions, and countermeasures against threats, including low-flying aircraft and precision-guided weapons. Despite its promise, major problems arose during the project's execution, ultimately resulting in its termination. The largest problem was related to electronic components. Due to sanctions, supplies of essential microchips and other high-tech elements were repeatedly disrupted. This created severe challenges for radar systems and onboard electronics that required advanced technology, often of imported origin. As a result, serial production equipment was delayed, manufacturing processes had to be reorganized to use domestic analogs, and the reliability of the final product became uncertain. Even before sanctions intensified, the program already faced serious delays. Specialists indicated that progress on the A-100's equipment development was slow. Serial production timelines frequently shifted. By the year 2025, estimates suggested that large-scale assembly would not begin before 2027 or 2028. Another serious setback occurred when the aviation plant in Taganrog known as Beriv T-A-N-K, was struck during an attack. Warehouses and hangars containing prototype aircraft were damaged or destroyed. According to open-source reports, the A-100LL Flying Laboratory, which was used for testing the A-100's systems, was among the aircraft destroyed. With the loss of the A-100LL, further testing became impossible. Without this platform, engineers could not perform qualifications, mode testing, or long-term stability evaluations. On the 1st of December, 2025, an announcement appeared from a former pilot who is the author of a well-known military aviation channel. He stated that the development of the A-100 Premier had been officially terminated. According to his information, only one prototype now exists. It was moved out of the factory in the year 2024 and has not returned since. Its present location is unknown. He also remarked sarcastically that remaining aircraft might be converted into Death Stars, implying decommissioning or scrapping. The end of the A-100 program represents a major setback to Russian airborne early warning modernization. The Russian fleet already suffered losses in recent years, including the destruction of several A-50 aircraft. As a result, the number of operational AWACS aircraft has dropped to a critically low level. Without the A-100, Russia will likely continue relying on upgraded A-50 and A-50U aircraft, or will increase dependence on ground-based radar. However, fixed radars cannot fully replace the mobility, 
altitude advantage, and wide coverage that airborne systems provide. Some specialists suggest that equipment developed for the A100 could still be transferred to upgraded A50 platforms. This means that not all technological progress is lost. Certain radar modules, processing units, or communication systems might be repurposed. Although the announcement suggests closure, several nuances remain. First, there has been no official public confirmation from state authorities. Internal adjustments or reconsideration remain theoretically possible. Second, the A100's development produced valuable radar technologies, signal processing methods, and integration experience that may still benefit other aircraft. Third, the program could potentially restart if Russia resolves issues related to import substitution, logistics, and production reliability. The remark about Death Stars is almost certainly metaphorical. It reflects frustration that a once promising high tech aircraft may end up dismantled or left as scrap. It underscores the idea that years of work, significant investment, and major technological groundwork may ultimately lead to an abandoned prototype rather than a functional fleet. Several future paths remain possible. Russia may install A100 technologies into modernized A50 aircraft to maintain minimal airborne warning capability. The program might also be re-evaluated and revived later if industrial issues are solved. Another direction involves expanding ground-based radar networks or using networked fighter aircraft, such as the MiG-31BM, Su-35S, Su-57, and Su-34, as distributed long-range sensing nodes. These approaches could reduce vulnerability to attacks and sanctions by relying on existing airframes. The A100 Premier was intended to become the centerpiece of a new generation of Russian AWACS aircraft with advanced radar range, the ability to track hundreds of targets, improved command capabilities, and fast reaction times. Reality intervened in the form of sanctions, component shortages, the destruction of critical testing infrastructure, and attacks on manufacturing facilities. The result appears to be the likely termination of the project. Still, the technological foundation and accumulated expertise may support future upgrades to existing aircraft or a revived project under new conditions. For now, the A100 remains a symbol of unrealized potential and the challenges facing modern defense aviation production. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.